All right, welcome everybody. So I think this week we'll take a look at another something from Ghidorah. We got the IN 19 PM in hex driver set. So this is a half inch drive set for driving in hex screws. So and it basically is inclusive of all the normal sizes from five to 17. They've got a couple of oddball, they got a nine millimeter in here, which Apparently is used for some things, but I don't think I've ever run into a situation where I needed one. I'm sure there's some exotic car out there that requires a 9mm for something. So this this thing comes in the uh, kind of the old style Ghidorah metal cases. They don't sell that many things anymore with these in here, but you can see we got the stamp made in Germany with the Ghidorah blue color. It's a very, very good paint job on there. Nice powder coat. And it's just basically has a spring latch on it. Um, they're using the spring of this metal right here to close it. I guess that's that's probably sufficient, you know. It probably would take a long time for that to wear out, but I guess you could bend this down if you really needed to. So inside we got a piece of foam which I assume is to uh, prevent the and everything from moving around. Now, so, so I guess I probably would have preferred if they glued this to the top, but <clears throat> I can see the argument either way. You know, this thing's going to wear out eventually, and if it's glued there, then that's going to be a real pain. This will be a real pain in the butt to uh, get all that out. So the other thing is, uh, I guess you'd be worried about losing this. Uh, if you get a gust of wind or something, using these outside, they could blow that away. So without it in there, you could, I mean, you could still use it. It's just that they move around quite a bit in there. I don't think they're going to come out, but they will, you know, kind of chip the paint up here. So we got a special plastic insert here. We got a five, six, seven, eight. Then we got that all ball nine. We got ten, twelve. 14, 17. So I know it does skip a couple of larger sizes, but those ones in between would really be on an oddball fastener. I don't think I've ever seen a 13 millimeter used. This is a pretty cheesy piece of plastic, but I guess it gets the job done. But I, I just have a feeling this thing's going to kind of rot over time. I guess you definitely don't want to get any moisture or anything in here. Uh, this thing will probably degrade. Now I've seen actually people um, use like spray foam and spray foam the underside here so if it when it does start cracking which it, they inevitably always do um, it won't actually propagate as easily because it has that backer behind it don't know if I'm gonna do that here I think I'm probably just gonna leave it like this so these um these so these actually have quite a bit of length to them on the heads. They're not like the super short ones like you see sometimes. And I think part of that's so that they could all be about the same length to fit in this. So the smaller ones, like this five millimeter, it looks like you got about 20, looks like you got 22 millimeters there, or about seven eighths inches of length. It actually looks like these were engineered specifically to be in-hex in -hex drivers because if you look because if you look here at how thick this this sidewall is you you wouldn't see that on a normal socket so some of so a cheaper brand may actually just take their regular socket cut off a piece of a hex bar and then just shove it in and put some glue in there but I don't see any residue, any glue residue or anything, so I don't think that they're gluing these in. I think it looks to me like they're just basically interference fitted, uh, pressed in with a hydraulic press. So probably if you pull on this hard enough or, or if you put it into a vise, you could probably pull it out. Uh, but there's there shouldn't be that kind of axial load on the uh, on these when you're using them. So on the even on the biggest ones, we still got about 20 millimeters of... Uh, of length there. So yeah, you can see there's a also a bevel in there. 
And I get I think that's probably just mostly to aid in production when they're pressing these in. I'm sure there's a machine that does it. But they may have may not be able to index the the socket, you know, maybe rotated slightly. So if they put that that bevel in there, it kind of when they start pressing it, it'll kind of self-align. So definitely engineered specifically for this task. So I'm noticing that these have quite a deep uh, drive on them, more than I normally see in sockets. It almost looks like they're going up to about where this this bevel is on here. So because of that, you're going to have a little bit of up and down play on there. I think this is more for like a, a shop or a business it would really benefit more than these than your average homeowner unless you're really working on very large equipment because a lot of the robotics now are built with nothing but socket cap screws and I, I think some of them uh, use use this size or larger but really for for the price you know I, I don't think you're I definitely don't think you're getting a bad deal if you compare this to what the equivalent you know snap-on set would be so I'm just facing all the numbers out I mean you're basically getting a set that's gonna last you probably your lifetime and you know maybe your kids lifetime as well all right well let's go uh, let's go find a place to use these I'm sure I could find something that needs to get done Sorry about the lighting and the uh, position here. This is probably the closest I can get to you. So what this, what I have here is, uh, I guess when the HVAC guy installed this, they just left the plastic cap, you know, that comes factory with these. This is just a drain line for the air conditioner uh, condenser. So one of these actually goes to the drain. The other one was just capped off with one of those... Uh, plastic caps they use for shipping and of course it leaked eventually I'm surprised it went as long as it did so we're just gonna cap it off with a little brass fitting it's probably not the right type of fitting to use here but this is not under pressure it's just gonna be basically gravity fed water so this uses a 12 millimeter uh, hex so depending on what order I review these in I'm gonna use this Ghidorah in hex socket. Since I don't need that half inch drive, I'm going to use this Ghidorah reducer. So, that's one thing I like about the heavy knurling on these Ghidorah units. You can really take up the slack pretty easily. Like, I can probably almost just thread it in exact like this without even using a ratchet on it. So, we'll put this Ghidorah reducer on there because I'm going to use my Belzer ratchet and since I can't get my Belzer ratchet in there quite far enough I'm going to use my Belzer insulated extender which actually has a couple of dual purposes you can also just use it as a as a driver so we can get a little bit further this way so once we got that about Snug tight, we'll give it another quarter turn with the ratchet. There you go, I think that should be good. So it's not exactly a conventional uh, drive there, but you can see just the awkwardness of where that is. I don't think I would have been able to get a half inch ratchet in here because it's so close to this thing. So, works pretty well. So just to do a little wrap up on this Ghidorah in hex set, really, really a nice tool. And I hope that they keep the metal case. You know, I think a part of a lot of the decisions that um, they make when they change things to plastic cases and stuff is really kind of a short term, short term outlook where they can, uh, where they say, I, I can save X number of dollars if I move to plastic on this tool and we sell X number of units per year and that means we're going to make this much more but there's so many other factors that go into whether somebody purchases it and and actually I could see people wanting to pay more for something in a metal case than a plastic case but that's just my opinion you know I don't really see Ghidorah making those kind of rash uh, decisions as often as other companies may so 
what's your guys opinion on the plastic versus metal case because you know this thing this metal case has to cost more than the plastic i mean look at it's got a enamel powder coat on it and uh all the uh all the things are welded on they're not riveted or screwed so that's some extra cost there too so you got welded hinges on there so i don't know if this case was uh possibly made in austria because if you look at their toolbox line it has the exact same powder coat as the toolboxes do and usually when when you have one facility that paints one product they're going to paint everything so i wouldn't doubt that this case itself is made in austria and then these are obviously forged in uh, germany and typically the, the country of origin is the uh, point of assembly uh, for the final product not necessarily the where the majority of the products come from so a lot of times you see these power tools that say uh, made in USA with global components and technically if you just slap a label on something I think that qualifies as being made in this country because you're still assembling the product but that's for another discussion so one thing um, I don't really like how this this piece of foam is uh, I feel like I'm gonna get this lost like a, like a gust of wind or something is gonna blow this away when you open it outside so I thought about gluing it but I think maybe I'll try some uh, double-sided tape so part of the uh, part of the thing about being a hoarder is um, anytime something expires at work they always uh, know who to give it to even though it says it expired in 2013 I tend to find that these things work just fine you just can't use it in a production product if you ever do an audit and they find that your tape that you're using is expired you can get in big trouble for that so they're pretty stringent about making sure everything that is on the floor is not expired so the uh, choices are either to throw it in the trash or find somebody who wants it and I probably had this for that long just haven't got around to using it but yeah it's still got a lot, a lot of tackiness to it so I don't, I don't see any issue with it this stuff can be kind of tricky because it's, it's a pressure sensitive adhesive so it doesn't really actually stick until you put some pressure on it so I've, this stuff does stick to foam because that's the primary thing that I've we've used this for So the thing about using tape, you know, it, if I ever need to replace this, it's a lot easier to get off than a, an adhesive would be. All right, so I think that should work quite well. This is, so this is not something I really use a lot. So maybe we'll do a follow-up in a couple years or something. Uh, once I see how they hold up over just having occasional use but I feel like this set's gonna last me forever I don't really see anticipate any issues with it very nice product so all right guys what's well, gonna wrap it up for this one hopefully you guys enjoyed that and I'll catch you guys next time